My name is Jeff Mahiv, and we are continuing our discussion on how to be the best small group leaders we can be. Specifically, we've been looking at the inductive Bible study method. So here's a quick review. There are three steps. Observation, what does the passage say? And those observations should build to the second step, which is interpretation. What does this passage mean? And then the third step is application. How do we apply this meaning to my life? Previously, we have discussed the importance of spending a good amount of time in observation. You can never spend too much time in observation. But today we're going to focus on the second step, which is interpretation. Now, I want to remind you that this is the second step for a reason. This step has to follow good observation. Interpretation asks the question, what does this text mean? And I'm going to add a little bit to it. I'm going to add, what does this text mean to the original hearers? Here's an example for why I add that. In one passage, Jesus tells a parable about wineskins. Now, I don't even know what a wineskin is. Everything I know about wineskins, I know because I looked it up because of this parable. But when Jesus was telling the parable, he was standing there, and there were people standing around him who knew everything about wineskins. They probably had some with them. In order for me to understand the meaning of this parable, I have to take a step back and try to understand what the parable would have meant to the people who were standing around Jesus when he told it. And I'm going to say something here that gets me into a little bit of trouble. But hear me out. When you study a passage, it really has one main idea. Now, there may be some other minor points to discuss, but each passage has one main thing to say. And good Bible study is discovering what that is. It's a process of self-discovery. And you're going to hear the opposite in culture all the time. You're going to hear the Bible can be interpreted in a hundred different ways. But that's simply not true. It can be misinterpreted a hundred different ways. But if you take a passage and you sit around the table with seven people, they don't even have to be all Christians, and you do good inductive study, the main theme falls right out. 98% of the time, the main theme is right there. There are a few passages in the scriptures that are very hard. But a vast majority of the time, the main theme comes out with just a little bit of work. So let me pause a minute because I want to make something clear. What I'm saying is that the word of God can be understood by us. We can understand the inspired word of God. <laughs> and that means that we can know what God is saying to us. This is huge. This is amazing. This should give you goosebumps right now. And this should also give you a little bit of fear. We should be cautious at this point so that we do not make a mistake. I want to be careful so that we do not misinterpret God's word. So how do we do that? Well, there are a few different reactions to this fear. Some people have seen the Bible misused so often and they're afraid of misusing the Bible themselves. So they just take the Bible, put it on the shelf, and leave it there. They would rather just talk about general ideas. But I'm more interested in what God has to say to us. Aren't you? So don't let your fear of the Bible distract you and cause you to avoid the Bible. There's a much better option than avoiding the Bible. Diving in. Go back to step one. Go back to good observation. Your fear and concern about getting the meaning right in the text should drive you back into the text. If you're unsure about your interpretation, go get more observations. Learn about the text. Wrestle with it. Pray more about it. Ask some other people about it. Don't be in such a hurry. Why are we always in such a hurry when we study the Bible anyway? Why don't we slow down? Why do we go so fast? So slow down and learn the Bible well. How we handle the Bible is critical, and it brings two images into my mind, and they both involve a big sword. The Word of God is often described as a sword. In my first image, there's a little kid with the big, big sword, and he goes like this. It's way too big for him. And my second image is a big, muscular, trained soldier who takes that same sword and goes, whoosh, 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 whoosh. My question is, which one is dangerous? They both are, aren't they? In their own way, they're both dangerous. But which one are you? Which one are you? As you study scripture, what kind of dangerous are you? Learn to be the right kind of dangerous with the word of God. Be serious about being a great Bible study leader and become skilled at handling the scripture. This will help you in many aspects of your leadership. May it be true that when you handle scripture, it's a life-giving event for both you and those around you.